Dragon Age Origins was rated M for Mature by the ESRB and contains blood, intense violence, language, partial nudity, and sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Trigger warning. The City Elf Origin deals in overt fantasy racial violence and heavily implied sexual assault. If these are triggers for you, I repeat, viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Emeronith and I play games for the internet and today we're playing Dragon Age Origins bonus series, The City Elf Origin. Um, last time we were going to get married and then a drunk lord showed up and we got kidnapped along with a bunch of other people in our wedding party and I'm real mad about it because I was in the middle of getting married and this bastard is like oh look at me I'm a human lord I get to have what I want and that means I get to rape you and your friends me 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 and we Let's were like, get started. you're a big fucking idiot. And he was like, yeah, a big fucking idiot who totally kidnapped you. So, uh, now we're here. And he took... What's this? I don't recognize you, elf. Wait, is that blood? You're bandits, rebels, outlaws. The guards will make quick work of you. Oh! You have no idea how long that Shem's had it coming. Hell yeah. Have you seen a group of elven maidens? Yes. Dragged them to Lord Vaughn's quarters, they did. You should hurry if you want to help them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm getting out of here before the storm hits. Small kid. <clears throat> On it. Where did you get a weapon, elf? Uh-oh. You better talk quick, scum. Get back to your game, maybe you'll live. Are you insane? You maggots are gonna die slowly. If... And Soros is here. Let's protect my idiot cousin. I do, brother. Uh, all right. Uh, why is there? St I mean, mm, never mind. That's a stupid question. Uh, nothing in here that's useful. As you wish. This should be easy enough. Right. <laughs> there is your weakness! Let's get started. <laughs> Come now, defend yourself! <laughs> Only one shall stand! You. Time for <laughs> fun! <laughs> This should be easy enough. 
Warden sense is tingling. You're not a warden. This should be easy enough. So technically, we're just going to kill everyone on the there and rob them Let's blind. Get started. Because fuck them. That's why. Uh. There we go. Okay. Um. So, I've got my mom's boots on. That's better. Told you there'd be more. Elves run in packs like rodents. Should we keep the knife here, bitch alive? They killed our boys. She dies. You killed Nelaros. Ha! <laughs> he squealed like a stuck pig when he died. <laughs> Let's see if you do too. to save me let's make sure it wasn't in vain we should hurry before something happens to the others I'm not opening these just to fight the dogs. Come on. As you wish. On it. Really? 
those two give nothing? Fine. As you wish. Cool, that leads nowhere. This should be easy enough. On it. This should be easy enough. You have it coming! Is this this door leads probably outside right so this door continues on to Sir Vaughn's rooms where Shiani and this the others should be easy The key? No. Key in here? As you wish. <laughs> On it. him in the nuts. Heirloom necklace and a gold ring. Really? That was tough. Fine. Right. Let's get started. Gotta love how the servants are just like, mm, we see nothing. On it. You got my back, ha, I can see why. As you wish. Right. As you wish. Let's get started. Really? That's, that's it? Why are you alone in a locked room?
My, my. What have we here? Don't worry. We'll make short sure work of these two. Quiet, you idiot! They're covered with enough blood to fill a tub. What do you think that means? <laughs> You're going to pay for what you've done. All right. Let's not be too hasty here. Surely we can talk this over. No. I want your head, nothing else. Ha! I always regret talking to knife ears. Now I'll just gut your ignorant carcasses instead. Enemies approaching. No quarter! Ah! Show me what you've got! He's he's dead. Tell me we did the right thing, cousin. What's important is of course. I hope you're right. I'll check the back room for the others. Shiani needs you. This should be easy enough. I don't know if, um... Like, if I don't take shit now, I'll lose it all, so... <clears throat> D don't leave me alone. Please. Please take me home. Everything will be all right. So much blood. I, I can't stand to look at it. It's everywhere. You killed them, didn't you? You killed them all? Not just them. All the humans who hurt you. Good. Good. Uh, uh. Is she going to be all right? Let's just get out of here. I'll take the rear guard. I can't wait to leave this place. You've returned. Has Shiani been hurt? Where is Tormi's daughter, Nola? Nola didn't make it. She resisted. <laughs> they killed her. Nelaros, too. The guards killed him. I see. Would the rest of you ladies please take Shiani home? She needs rest. Of course. Now tell me, what happened? Born's dead. Then the garrison could already be on their way. You have little time. I'm not sure what we should do. The guards are here! Don't panic. Let's see what comes of this. I seek Melendrian, elder and administrator of the alienage. Uh, here, Captain. I take it you have come in response to today's disruption. Don't play ignorant with me, elder. You will not prevent justice from being done. The Earl's son lies dead in a river of blood that runs through the entire palace. I need names, and I need them now. It was my doing. You expect me to believe one woman did all of that? We are not all so helpless, Captain. You save many by coming forward. I don't envy your fate, but I applaud your courage. This elf will wait in the dungeon until the Earl returns. The rest of you, back to your houses. Captain, a word, if you please. What is it, Grey Warden? The situation is well under control, as you can see. Be that as it may, I hereby invoke the Grey Warden's right of conscription. I remove this woman into my custody. Uh, you can do that? Son of a tie down. Very well, Grey Warden. I cannot challenge your rights, but I'll ask one thing. 
Get this elf out of the city today. Agreed. Now I need to get my men on the streets before this news hits. Move out! You're with me now. Say your goodbyes and see me when you're ready. We leave immediately. Uh, but what's going to happen here? For the moment, they are fine. There are far more important matters arising that endanger more than just your people. I needed a Grey Warden and I found one. That conscripting you saved your life is only circumstance. You did what you had to do to accomplish your mission. We need people like you. Now quickly, say your goodbyes. Your life here is over. Okay. So... We're in a little bit of a pickle. Just a smidge, but let's go talk to people. Maybe this will be for the best. Hey. You should go quickly. Just know that we're all going to miss you. If this is what the Maker has planned for you, then I guess it's for the best. Your mother would have been pleased. You're not pleased? I just wish there was another way. I dreamed of grandchildren, family gatherings, and... I'm sorry this isn't helping. Take care, my girl. Be safe. And wise. And... Well, you know. We'll all miss you. There you are. Thank you. For me, for Saurus, for everything. We elves need to stick together. You're the sister I always wanted. Shiani seems to have regained herself. I'll leave you two alone. Good luck, and thank you again. You took all the responsibility for what happened. You're amazing, you know that? How are you go? How are you holding up? I'm all right. As far as the others know, Vaughn just roughed me up a bit. I just don't want them treating me like some fragile doll. <sighs> I love you, cousin. Make us proud out there. I love you too, Shiani. Make her watch over you. Yeah, with the city elf uh, origin. While it doesn't go into graphic detail, it doesn't really hold back, does it? But we've talked to everybody we can talk to, or that we wanted to talk to. And, um... So that just leaves us with Valerian and Duncan. Well, I guess Duncan got his recruit after all. I look forward to being a Grey Warden. You were the reason he came here. Perhaps it's for the best. If you'll excuse me, I must tend to our people. Goodbye, young one. And make her keep you. Are you ready to go? I am. Good. Then we leave for Ostagar immediately.
and then this scene all over again. We will be traveling south through the hinterlands to the ruin of Ostagar, on the edges of the Korkari Wilds. The Tevinter Imperium built Ostagar long ago to prevent the Wilders from invading the northern lowlands. It's fitting we make our stand here, even if we face a different foe within that forest. The King's forces have clashed with the Darkspawn several times, but here is where the bulk of the Horde will show itself. There are only a few Grey Wardens within Ferelden at the moment, but all of us are here. This blight must be stopped, here and now. If it spreads to the north, Ferelden will fall. Ho there, Duncan. King Caelan. I didn't expect a... A royal welcome? I was beginning to worry you'd miss all the fun. Not if I could help it, Your Majesty. Then I'll have the mighty Duncan at my side in battle after all. Glorious. The other wardens told me you'd found a promising recruit. I take it this is she? Allow me to introduce you, Your Majesty. There's no need to be so formal, Duncan. We'll be shedding blood together after all. Ho there, friend. Might I know your name? I am no friend of yours, human lord. <laughs> You've got yourself a lively one, Duncan. And I was beginning to think the wardens were all stodgy priests. I see you're an elf, friend. From where do you hail? The city of Denerim. As do I. Though I've not been in the palace for some time. Do you come from the alienage? Tell me, how is it there? My guards all but forbid me going there. I killed the Noral's son for raping my friend. You... what? Your Majesty, I would not have put it so bluntly. There are events in Denerim you should be aware of. So it seems. I will hear more about this matter later. But for now, we have a war to attend to. Allow me to be the first to welcome you to Ostagar. The Wardens will benefit greatly with you in their ranks. We'll see about that. I'm sorry to cut this short, but I should return to my tent. Loghain waits eagerly to bore me with his strategies. Your uncle sends his greetings and reminds you that Redcliffe forces could be here in less than a week. Ha! <laughs> Eamon just wants in on the glory. We've won three battles against these monsters, and tomorrow should be no different. Sounds like the blight's almost over. I'm not even sure this is a true blight. There are plenty of darkspawn on the field, but alas, we've seen no sign of an archdemon. Disappointed, Your Majesty? I'd hoped for a war like in the tales. You know, a king riding with the fabled Grey Wardens against a tainted god. But I suppose this will have to do. I must go before Loghain sends out a search party. Farewell, Grey Wardens. What the king said is true. They've won several battles against the Darkspawn here. Yet you don't sound very reassured. Despite the victory so far, the Darkspawn horde grows larger with each passing day. By now, they look to outnumber us. I know there is an archdemon behind this, but I cannot ask the king to act solely on my feeling. You could, if you were not such a fool. You must not speak of the king so. He is over-eager, perhaps, but he is also one of the few Grey Warden allies. Our numbers in Ferelden are too few. We must do what we can, and look to Terran Loghain to make up the difference. To that end, we should proceed with the joining ritual without delay. A hot meal might be nice first. <laughs> I agree. We have until nightfall to begin the ritual. Every recruit must go through a secret ritual we call the Joining, in order to become a Grey Warden. The ritual is brief, but some preparation is required. We must begin soon. Am I the only recruit you have? No, there are two other recruits here already. They have been waiting for us to arrive. Ah. Why is the ritual so secret? The Joining is dangerous. I cannot speak more of it except to say that you will learn all in good time. Until then, you must trust that what is done is necessary. <sighs> Wonderful. Let's get this over with then.
Feel free to explore the camp here as you wish. All I ask is that you do not leave it for the time being. There is another Grey Warden in the camp by the name of Alistair. When you're ready, seek him out and tell him it's time to summon the other recruits. Until then, I have business I must attend to. You may find me at the Grey Warden tent on the other side of this bridge, should you need to. And with that, we have reached the end of the City Elf Origin. And now we read our codex entries. Not these. Or these. But these. Starting with Creatures, Article 3, Archdemon. In darkness eternal they searched for those who had goaded them on until at last they found their prize, their god, their betrayer, the sleeping dragon Dumat. Their taint twisted even the false god, and the whisperer awoke at last, in pain, in that horror, and led them to wreak havoc upon all the nations of the world. The first blight. Thronades, 8-7. The false dragon gods of the Tevinter Imperium lie buried deep within the earth where they have been imprisoned since the Maker cast them down. No one knows what it is that drives the Darkspawn in their relentless search for the sleeping old gods. Perhaps it is instinct, as moths will fly into torch flames. Perhaps there is some remnant of desire for vengeance upon the ones who goaded the Magisters to assault heaven. Whatever the reason, when a Darkspawn finds one of these ancient dragons, it is immediately afflicted by the taint. It awakens, twisted and corrupted, and leads the Darkspawn in a full-scale invasion of the land. A blight. Article 17, Mabari Warhound. Dogs are an essential part of Ferelden culture, and no dog is more prized than the Mabari. The breed is as old as myth, and said to have been bred from the wolves who served Dane. Prized for their intelligence and loyalty, these dogs are more than mere weapons or status symbols. The hounds choose their master, and pair with them for life. To be the master of a Mabari anywhere in Ferelden is to be recognized instantly as a person of worth. The Mabari are an essential part of Ferelden military strategy. Trained hounds can easily pull knights from horseback or break lines of pikemen, and the sight and sound of a wave of war dogs howling and snarling has been known to cause panic among even the most hardened infantry soldiers. <clears throat> Article 66 the Chant of Light, the Blight. No matter their power, their triumphs, the mage lords of Tevinter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts, Shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the lords of the earth. Go forth and claim the empty throne of heaven and be gods. In secret they worked magic upon magic, all their power and all their vanity, they turned against the veil, until at last it gave way. Above them a river of light, before them the throne of heaven, waiting beneath their feet the footprints of the Maker, and all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth, and so the golden city blackened with each step you take in my hall. Sorry, and so is the golden city blackened with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Violently they were cast down. Well, violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams, bearing the mark of their crime, bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them and know them for men. Deep into the earth they fled, away from the light. In darkness eternal they searched for those who had goaded them on, until at last they found their prize, their god, their betrayer, the sleeping dragon Dumont. Their, faint, their taint twisted even the false god, and the whisperer awoke at last, in pain and horror, and led them to wreak havoc upon all the nations of the world. The first blight. 
from Thernades 8. Article 67, The Commandments of the Maker. These truths the Maker has revealed to me, as there is but one world, one life, one death, there is but one God, and he is our Maker. They are sinners who have given their love to false gods. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Maleficar, accursed ones. They shall find no rest in this world or beyond. All men are the work of our Maker's hands, from the lowest slaves to the highest kings. Those who bring harm without provocation to the least of his children are hated and accursed by the Maker. Those who bear false witness and work to deceive others know this. There is but one truth. All things are known to our Maker, and he shall judge their lies. All things in this world are finite. What one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters do harm their livelihood, do harm to their livelihood and to their peace of mind. Our Maker sees this with a heavy heart. Transfigurations, one through one, one through five. Article one ten, the city elves. As human tell, humans tell tales of Andraste, and to them she was a prophet. To our people, however, she was an inspiration. Her rebellion against Vinter gave our people a window through which to see the sun, and we reached toward it with all our strength. The rebellion was brief but successful. Even after the death of the prophetess, we fought on for independence as the human imperium began to crumble. In the end, we won freedom and the southern land known as the Dales, and we began the long walk to our new homeland. There in the Dales, our people revived the lost lore as best we could. We called the first city Halam Shiral, end of the journey, and founded a new nation isolated as elves were meant to be, this time patrolled by an order of emerald knights charged with watching the borders for trouble from humans. But you already know that something went wrong. A small elven raiding party attacked to the nearby human village of Red Crossing, an act of anger that prompted the Chantry to retaliate, and, with their superior numbers, conquer the Dales. We were not enslaved as we had been before, but our worship of the ancient gods was now forbidden. We were allowed to live among the humans only as second-class citizens who worshipped their maker, forgetting once more the scraps of lore we had maintained through the centuries. The rise and fall of the Dales, as told by Serethia, Paran of High Ever Alienage. Article 111, Alienage Culture. There have always been alienage, al alienages. They have been around for as long as elves and shems have lived in the same lands. Ours isn't even the worst. They say that Valroyal has 10,000 elves living in a space no bigger than Denerum's market. Their walls are supposedly so high that daylight doesn't reach the v the Venadol until midday. But don't be so anxious to start tearing down the walls and picking fights with the guards. They keep out more than they keep in. We don't have to live here, you know. Sometimes a family gets a good break and they buy a house in the docks or the outskirts of town. If they're lucky, they come back to the alienage after the looters have burned their house down. The unlucky ones just go to the pauper's field. Here we're among family. We look out for each other. Here we do what we can to remember the old ways. The flat ears who have gone out there, they're stuck. They'll never be human and they've gone and thrown away being elven too. So where does that leave them? Nowhere. Serethia, Haren of the High Ever Alienage. Article 114, The Dela Shelves. I took the road north from Val Royo to N toward Navarra with a merchant caravan. A scant two days past the Orlesian border, we were beset by bandits. They struck without warning from the cover of the trees, hammering our wagons with arrows, killing most of the caravan, caravan guards instantly. The few who survived the arrow storm drew their blades and charged into the trees after our attackers. We heard screams muffled by the forest, and then nothing more of those men. After a long silence, the bandits appeared, elves covered in tattoos and dressed in hides. They looted all the supplies and valuables they could carry from the merchants and disappeared back into the trees. These, I was informed later, were the Dalish, 
the wild elves who lurk in the wilderness on the fringes of settled lands, preying upon travelers and isolated farmers. These wild elves have reverted to the worship of their false gods and are rumored to practice their own form of magic, rejecting all human society. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, at The Travels of a Chantry Scholar, by Brothers in the TV. Article 117, History of Ferelden, Chapter 1. Ferelden, as we think of it now, did not exist before the Exalted Age. Instead, the valley was divided up into dozens of old Alamari clans. They warred constantly with one another over land, honor, the allegiance of the freeholders, and on one notable occasion, the name given to a favorite Mabari. And then, in the 33rd year of the Exalted Age, Kalanhad Theron became Tyrion of Denerim, and everything changed. Most of what we know about the founding of our nation comes from the old songs <clears throat> that the bards passed down through the ages. The songs are filled with wild exaggerations and outright lies, the, but, this is hard, but this hardly differs from the scholarly papers of some of my contemporaries. There is no argument among poets or scholars on how he did it, but Callan had gained the support of the Circle of Magi, and they crafted him, for him a suit of silvery white armor that, by all accounts, repelled both arrow and blade. Callan had led his army across the valley and captured Redcliffe, one of only three men who ever successfully laid siege to that fortress, and presented himself to the bands as, of the Landsmeet as their king. The poets tell us that every lord knelt before Callan had without question. The fact that he attained the Landsmeet, he attended the Landsmeet surrounded by ash warriors and loyal mages of the circle, is generally omitted from the ballads, however. From Kalanhad came the line of Theron kings and queens who reign uninterrupted in the, until the 44th year of the Blessed Age, when the Elysian invasion came. The rightful king was forced to flee Denerim, and for 70 years a puppet sat upon the throne. From Ferelden, Folklore and History, by Sister Petrine, Chantry Scholar. Chapter, uh, Article 118. God. History of Ferelden, Chapter 2. The occupation was a dark blot on Ferelden's history. Our people, who from time immemorial valued their freedom over all else, were forced to bow to our legion rule. The Empire declared our elves property and sold them like cattle. Chevaliers routinely plundered freeholds of coin, food, and even women and children, and excused it as taxation. And for seventy years no lands meet were held, for the imperial throne had declared our ancient laws a form of treason. King Grandal was one of those who escaped. He tried to organize the other fugitive lords to retake their lands, but Brandal was neither clever nor persuasive, and the nobles preferred to take their chances alone. Ferelden might still be little more than a territory of the Empire were it not for the fact that his daughter had all the charisma and her royal father that her royal father lacked. The rebel queen's rule began with a midnight attack on the Imperial Armory with in, at Lothering. Meh. It was a swift and it was swift and successful with their pilfered arm and with their pilfered arms the rebels began a campaign against the Orlesians in earnest but the turning point of the war came when a young freeholder joined the queen's army the lad logan logan mcteer possessed a remarkable talent for strategy and quickly became the favorite advisor of young prince merrick the queen finally died at the hands of Orlesian sympathizers anxious to curry favor with their painted masters and merrick took her place as the leader of the rebellion Loghain became Merrick's right hand. Merrick and Loghain led the, rebel the rebels in a new campaign against the Orlesian oppressors, culminating in the Battle of Riverdane, where the last chevaliers in Denerim were crushed. With the capital once more in the hands of her Eldons, the battle to free our people was finally over, but the battle to rebuild what had been lost had only just begun. From Ferelden Folklore and History, by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. Article 119, Culture of Ferelden. The Ferelden's are a puzzle. As a people, they are one bad day away from reverting to barbarism. They repelled invasions from Tevinter during the height of the Imperium with nothing but dogs in their own obstinate disposition. They are the coarse, willful, dirty, disorganized people who somehow gave rise to our prophet, ushered in an era of enlightenment, and toppled the greatest empire in history. There are few things you can assume safely when in dealing with these people. First, they value loyalty above all things, beyond wealth, beyond power, beyond reason. Second, although they have nothing in their na entire country, which you are likely to think at all remarkable, 
they are extremely proud of their accomplishments. Third, if you insult their dogs, they are likely to declare war. And finally, the surest sign that you have underestimated the Ferelden is that you think you have come to understand them. And Priscilline I of Orlais, in a letter to her newly appointed ambassador to Denerim. Article 157. Venadol, the tree of the people. Mostly the old ways are gone. Each generation forgets a little more of the old tongue, a little more of the traditions, and a few... The few things we keep become simple habits, meaning long since faded. So it is so it is with the Venadol, the tree of the people. Every alienage has one, I'm told, or they used to. When I was a little girl, my mother told me the tree was a symbol of Arlathan, but not even she knew more. Keeping the Venadol is just a habit now. Many cities have let theirs wither and die, then chop them up for firewood. No great loss. Serathia. Haren of the High Ever Alienage. Article 158. The Grey Wardens. The first blight had already raged for ninety years. The world was in chaos. A god had risen, twisted and corrupted. The remaining gods of Deventer were silent, withdrawn. What writing we have recovered from those times is filled with despair, for everyone believed, from the greatest archons to the lowliest slaves, that the world was coming to an end. At a Weishaupt fortress in the desolate Underfells, a meeting transpired. Soldiers of the Imperium seasoned veterans, who had known nothing of their lo entire lifetimes except hopeless war, came together. When they left Weishaupt, they had renounced their oaths to the Imperium. They were soldiers no longer. They were the Grey Wardens. The Wardens began an aggressive campaign against the Blight, striking back against the Darkspawn, claiming, reclaiming lands given up for lost. The blight was far from over, but their victories brought notice, and soon they received aid from every nation in Thetis. They grew in number as well as reputation. Finally, in the year 992 of the Tevinter Imperium, upon the silent plains they met the archdemon Dumont in battle. A third of all the armies of northern Thetis were lost to the fighting, but Dumont fell and the Darkspawn fled back underground. Even that was not the end. The Imperium once revered seven gods, Dumont. Zazakel, Toth, Endoral, Razakel, Lusikin, and Erethri Erthemiel. Four have risen as archdemons. The Grey Wardens have kept wa watch through the ages, well aware that peace is fleeting, and that their war continues until the last of the dragon gods is gone. From Ferelden, Folklore and History, by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. Article 159 the Krakari Wilds. It is said that in the midst of the Black Age, when werewolves stalked the lands of Ferelden in numbers that kept every farm holder indoors, and a hound on every doorstep, a powerful Arl of the Alamari people stood and declared that he would put an end to the threat. His Arling stood on the border of the Dark Forest on the southern border of the Ferelden Valley, and he claimed that the werewolves used the forest to launch their midnight assaults on humanity. For twenty years, this Arl led an army of warriors and hounds deep into the forest. In his hunt for the werewolves, he slew not only every wolf he came across, uh, he came upon, but also every member of the chase and wilder folk. Any one of them, he said, could harbor a demon inside and thus be a werewolf in disguise. For twenty years, the forest rang with screams and the rivers ran red. The tales that say... The tales say that an old chastened woman found her sons all dead at the Oral's blades. She pulled one of those very blades out from one son's heart and plunged it into her own chest, cursing the Oral's name as she did so. Where her blood touched the ground, a mist began to rise. It spread and spread until it was everywhere in the forest. The Oral's army became lost, and it is said that they died there. Others say that they wander still. The ruins of his Arling stand to this day filled with the ghosts of women, waiting eternally for their husbands to return. The forest of legend is, of course, the Kokari Wild the Kokari Wilds. There are as many legends about the Great Southern Forest as there are shadows, or so the saying goes. The chastened wilder folk have made their home there since mankind first came to these lands, and the wildlands spread far as far into the south as anyone has ventured. 
Beyond the mists are vast tracts of snow, white-capped mountains, and entire fields of ice. It, it is a land too cold for mankind to survive, yet the chastened eke out an existence even there. And they tell of horrors beyond the wilds that the lowland folk could not begin to comprehend. To most, Ferelden simply ends with the Krakari Wilds. There is nothing beyond. The wilds is a land of great trees, wet marshes, and dangerous monsters. What more need be said? From Land of the Wilders by Mother Aelis, Chantry Scholar, 918 Dragon. Article 160 Darkspawn Those who had sought to claim heaven by violence destroyed it. What was golden and pure turned black. Those who had once been mage lords, the brightest of their age, were no longer men but monsters. Trinati's 12-1 Sin was the midwife that ushered the darkspawn into this world. The magisters fell from the golden city, and their fate encompassed all our worlds. For they were not alone. No one knows where the darkspawn came from. A dark mockery of men in the darkest places they thrive, growing in numbers as a plague of locusts will. In raids, they will often take captives, dragging their victims alive into the deep roads, but most evidence suggests that these are eaten. Like spiders, it seems darkspawn prefer their food still breathing. Perhaps they are simply spawned by the darkness. Certainly, we know that evil has no trouble perpetuating itself. The last blight was in the Age of Towers, striking once again at the heart of Tevinter, spreading south into Orle and east into the Free Marches. The plague spread as far as Ferelden, but withering and twisting of the land stopped well beyond our borders. Here, Darkspawn have never been more than the stuff of legends. In the northern lands, however, particularly to Vinter and the Anderfells, they say Darkspawn haunt the hinterlands, preying on outlying farmers and isolated villages. A constant threat. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. Article 165, King Caelan Theron. I'd hoped for a war like in the tales, a king riding with the fabled Grey Wardens against a tainted god. Son of the legendary King Merrick Theron, Caelan was the first Ferelden king born into a land free from foreign rule in two generations. Since his father's death, he's held the throne alongside his queen, Enora. Article 169, Duncan. Men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings, the Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness, and prevailed. Like many others, Duncan gave up his family name when he joined the ranks of the wa Wardens, a symbolic gesture of cutting ties. He might say that this was a convenience in his case, however. His mother was from An the Anderfells, his father from Tevinter. His childhood was spent in the Free Marches in Orlais. His people were everywhere, and his homeland was nowhere. He was given the almost impossible task of leading the for Wardens in Ferelden, a kingdom that had thrown the Order out two hundred years earlier. Facing local suspicion and hostility, he set about finding recruits. Article 180, Loghain Mactir. It takes more than legends to win a battle. Loghain was born a farmer during a time when his cousin was under foreign occupation, when he was still a boy, he gained the res bleh, he joined the resistance. The when under the armed occupation, Loghain was born a farmer during a time when his country was under foreign rule, foreign occupation. Oh my God! Why can't I say the damn words? When he was still a boy, he joined the resistance, where his considerable tactical genius quickly became apparent. He became close friends with Prince Merrick, the last true heir to the Ferelden throne, and together they led the rebels to drive out the forces of the Orlesian Empire. Merrick raised his friend to the nobility, and Loghain is now more of a symbol than a man. He represents the Ferelden ideals of hard work and independence. Article 186 Valandrian Remember that our strength lies in commitment to the tradition and to each other. Every alienage has a harem, an elder. It falls to the harem to arrange marriages for those without a family, to negotiate with the guards when there is trouble, 
and to act as a sort of mayor and surrogate uncle to the people of the Alien Edge. The title, like so many things, is a holdover from the time of Erlathan. Karharans are not necessarily the oldest person in their community, or even all that old. Tradition gives the role to the oldest soul, the wisest, cleverest, and most level-headed. Valandrian Val has been Haran of the Denarin alienage since he was in his thirties. And that is that for the City Elf origin. I hope to see you next time when we play through a different origin. Until then, bye-bye.